welcome Timothy and Stephen. So Stephen is the CIRA Projects Legal Fellow at the AIDS Legal Project of Pennsylvania, and Timothy is Director of Government Relations at AIDS Foundation Chicago. Welcome both. But Timothy, I have to start by congratulating you and the rest of the Illinois HIV Action Alliance for managing to achieve the holy grail, total repeal of an HIV specific criminal law. So I have to ask, how did you do it in a COVID pandemic year, no less? And, and what lessons can we all learn? Sure, thank you so much, Edwin, for, for having me. Um, and, and thank you so much for the kudos. I, I will tell you that the Illinois HIV Action Alliance is a coalition made up of people living with HIV and advocates and activists and community organizations that are really committed to ending the HIV epidemic here in Illinois. And we truly believe that the only way to do that is by addressing HIV related stigma, discrimination and criminalization in a very meaningful way. And so when we were discussing uh, you know, advancing legislation, we, we looked at potential modernization, but we settled on repeal because again, HIV is not a crime. And so we felt that we had the, the political uh, will here, the political capital, if it were, here in Illinois to be able to move that legislation. And so we had two dynamic uh, sponsors, legislative sponsors and Representative Carol Ammons and Senator Robert Peters that really helped us move it along. And, and I will tell you, one of the things that we really learned throughout the entire process, and even as the bill has already been signed by Governor Pritzker, is education never stops. Um, because there is so much misinformation, so much stigma uh, tied to HIV. And so uh, even though the bill has already been signed and enacted, um, our education will not stop. So you mentioned State Representative Carol Ammons, and we have a clip of her speaking at the governor's bill signing event in July. When Tim Jackson called my office and he said, you know, we have this law on the books that criminalizes HIV. I said, really? He said, oh yeah, it's, it's since 1986, it's been on the books and people with HIV are threatened with this law and only a few people have been charged with this and most of them are people of color and we need to do something about this. So I said, well, send me the information. He did. I immediately read it and I looked at it and I said, this has got to be some kind of archaic joke. We don't criminalize STDs or COVID or any other disease that is a public health issue. This is a health issue, yet we have a law on the books that criminalizes people. And so my colleague, Senator Peters, he said, I don't know, Carol, I don't know if we can get it done in the Senate. <laughs> you know I tell the truth all the time. It, it's the truth, we gotta tell the truth, we gotta tell people how this works so we can get it done. We just happened to have a black caucus meeting one night over in Springfield and who walks in the door but the president of the Senate and you know I ain't gonna miss an opportunity I said president we got this thing and we got to do it and Senator Peters is working hard and I really need your support to do this I said but I'm gonna pass it in the house and he said okay so we did we passed it in the house and he kept his word and he worked with Senator Peters to get it passed in the Senate that's how this works Finally, we're repealing Illinois' archaic HIV criminalization law, the likes of which swept the nation during the earlier years of the AIDS crisis. Research has shown these laws don't increase, decrease infection rates. They don't decrease infection rates, but they do increase stigma. It's high time that we treat HIV as we do other treatable, transmissible diseases, thereby treating our residents with dignity and furthering our mission to end this epidemic in Illinois. That still, still brings tears to my eyes, and I've watched that a few times, Timothy. We, we need to have champions like like uh, 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 State Representative Carol Ammons. I mean, uh, amazing, 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 and congratulations again. Um, but Stephen, we should also celebrate the states that have modernized their laws uh, in the US this year. Um, I think Nevada and Virginia. Um, t t tell us about, about what happened there. 
Well, one of the things that um, I'd like to highlight is that uh, one of the things that Timothy hinted at, he had the uh, political um, landscape for this to work in Illinois. And uh, each state is different. Now, Virginia did not go with a repeal. They decided to enact a, a, a different law that has more, more loopholes, or not loopholes, but more barriers for a prosecutor to jump through if they are to prove their case. Um, as we know, a lot of these statutes that are on the books from the early earlier days in the pandemic, intent was never really an issue. Intent was inferred from actually engaging in sexual conduct or conduct believed to transmit the virus. So uh, each state is different. Um, Nevada also passed another statute just so that if a prosecutor is going to actually attempt to move forward with one of these cases, that they have to actually prove all the elements of the statute. And it's, instead of being afforded the opportunity um, of making that burden the defendants. And, and those two states join Iowa, Colorado, California, North Carolina, Michigan, and Washington, But uh, which is amazing. But there's still many more to go. And I know Ciro has been at the forefront uh, uh, of helping to build community capacity, including the remarkable HIV is not a crime training academy series, the most reasons of which took place online this past summer. Now, this photo was from Indianapolis in 2018, the last in-person meeting, and you can see me in the crowd somewhere there. Um, but Stephen, there's, there's been a huge growth in state organizing, and I think a lot of that's to do with, with the HINAC uh, academies. Can, can you t tell us about uh, about HINAC and, and, and perhaps some of the states where, where there is or, you know, really great organizing happening? Absolutely. Well, HINAC is a, a great opportunity it stands for. HIV is not a crime. It's a national conference where we bring uh, state advocates together. And it's it's every state has a different uh, landscape. So it's, it kind of feels burdensome that people are doing this on their own. But the, the revelation that, you know, there are people working in we are currently active in 17 states, zero, with different um, advocacy groups. We do uh, strategic planning. We help them move forward. And we ultimately rely on the state advocates to figure out how they want to move forward. Is it a new bill? Is it repeal? What is the best result for your state? And how do the people living with HIV in your state want to move forward? So we do give them a lot of tools and let them figure out what is best for them. Um, in addition to the 17 states that Ciro is involved in, I believe there's about one or two other states that we are aware of their uh, efforts to repeal and or modernize their laws. So there has been just a growing, growing effort in a lot of states. And, you know, some states um, have it easier than others. And, and that's just the, the reality of the efforts right now on the ground. So, uh, Timothy, do you have any any tips for um, for people working not a, only in those other states, but on on repeal or modernization around the world? Yeah, I, I would say, and Stephen just hinted at it. Um, it it's that it's not really very top down. Um, it should be grounded and led by community. Um, he just hit it hint, hinted at a very important point, which is every state is different. Um, and so what we did in Illinois may not work in Virginia or Missouri, which also modernized their law earlier this year, too. Um, I saw Tammy put that um, in, in the chat. So thank you. Um, and so you, you have to understand that. And then you have to listen to the people that live in that state that are most impacted. Um, and so that's something that, that we did here in Illinois. And I think that's something that can be used not only here in the States, but really kind of globally, it's, it's really centering the people most impacted by these laws, and that's people living with HIV. And if I could just piggyback off of what uh, Timothy just said, it's about listening to the people most impacted. And that's one of the things that a lot of uh, state coalitions have been working for is the meaningful involvement of people living with HIV in the policy decisions. It, 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 it's it's forefront for a lot of people living with HIV that these laws are on the book, but as the state representative in Illinois said, they didn't even know that it existed. So for people living with HIV, it's a major a major obstacle, but for people living not living with HIV, they don't even know it exists. It's, it's very telling. So there has to be the people living with HIV that are most meaningfully affected to, to change the laws. Absolutely. Well, 
for now, though, thank you so much, Stephen Bryson and Timothy Jackson. But we'll see you again very soon for the Q&A. So how can our work at the local level benefit from global guidance and global networks and vice versa?